So our electronics are coming together nicely. I got a few bugs to figure out yet, but we're working on some more uh, parts. We're gonna tackle this floor now and uh, put our shifters in. I'm gonna put this patch panel in first. Uh, the floor is actually in excellent shape. It's just where the driver's foot was, where the biggest issue is. So um, we did get a patch panel, but it comes from a regular cab and uh, the back of it goes up here. Um, so I'm gonna cut this piece off at the back. Because right here you can see it's welded flush right across. So you're gonna try and make this look as original as possible. We'll weld it to the to the side here, the little lip goes up on the side here, and then we'll uh, um, seam seal it, and then we're gonna butt connect it all the way along the tunnel, the back, and on the floorboard. So you can overlap it if you want. I don't really like to do that because it's one more spot for moisture to sit, although it is easier to do because you don't have to be exact with your cuts and you can weld it on the bottom and on the top and, and less chance to burn through. We're gonna butt connect it though. Um, the panel doesn't fit 100%, so we're gonna cut out the floor and just get it close. So it's pretty tight here, so I think if we cut it a little bit, we'll have a little bit of room in the tunnel, and then we can drop the panel down in nicer and uh, fit this in nice. So after that, we'll cut some holes for our um, shifters, four-wheel drive and stick. And what I probably will do is cut the floor out of the uh, regular cab uh, larger and then put that right over top and then screw it and silicone it around the outside so we can take it off and still look at the uh, shifter underneath because because of this we didn't, uh, we didn't cut a hole in it just yet so the top shifter cover is off. And it was pretty tight sticking that in with, with the shifter sticking out. So we're going to make it so we can access that, still put that in through that access cover and then remove that cover afterwards if we uh, have to get access to it again. I don't know about that transmission yet, so I'm just taking the word on it that it fits right. So here we go. So I've got my scribe mark. It's kind of hard to see. Oh, that got me close. Just using my dentist pick. This camera can't see it, but there's a scribe mark all the way around. Uh, you gotta cover up the seat and got an old fireman jacket and make sure you cover up the windows and stuff We just spray that blanket with a little bit of water just for the sparks and make sure you never leave that alone once you uh, go outside I usually take it with me and throw it outside Just in case don't want fires, but we're gonna cut this uh, Cut this floor out leaving a good good inch past the line here and then uh, I can just get rid of all this rust here and then uh, we'll lay the floor in, try to get that tight. And then I use these little clips, which work really good to hold the floor nice and uh, level with each other. Um, you can pick these up pretty cheap. But what they do is they uh, grab the floor from the top and the bottom, pinch it tight, and then uh, give you some room to weld it. So here we go. So I got the other floor cut out and it fits a lot tighter now. It's not 100% yet. I got little gaps and stuff here um, just because of the imperfections. But what I've done before is taken uh, just soffit screws, these little little guys, and then just screwing it down so that the floor doesn't move. You can make your line perfectly. Just uh, as just a couple of them, not not too too many. You got to fill those holes in afterwards, and it's more grinding. But uh, we've got another little gap here. We might need a little bit of uh, persuasion with a two by four. Just kind of bend it down here, put a self tapper in, and then we can go and kind of bend this nicer. I can still stick my finger in behind there. And that's what you get with aftermarket parts. You have to work with them, play with them. Uh, some fit really nice. I know with our GTO, we could not get those aftermarket fenders to fit nice. So we went back to the originals and the, the gaps are 100% better. Um, just, uh, I could not get those gaps lined up. And that's what you get with aftermarket, but uh, floor pans are generally okay. So I'm gonna screw that down and then uh, cut it 100% right. 
Uh, right here is your frame rail on this side here and then it tees off right about here so you'll see all spot welds underneath here that's a real pain and then right along the seam on the inside on the dodge there's also your inner rocker which folds over and it's all spot welded on here so by the time you get your floor out it will look something like this uh, and you'll lose a pint or two of sweat it uh, is frustrating because you can't see the spot welds anymore to drill them out because uh, the floor is too rotten. So uh, we're gonna keep going on the floor and hopefully have it in by tonight and get the shifters in there and then the truck will almost be mobile. Here we go. I like using these really thin zip cuts. It's uh, about the width of the spacer that goes in that little tool that lines up the floor. So if you trim it really nice around three edges and then the last one, remark it, stick it in there, remark it, and then cut the last one with the sheet out. When you cut, just make sure you're nice and tight up against the steel. And even if you cut into uh, this steel a little bit, uh, you still have a perfect cut all the way along. Just don't start to wander off to the uh, right. Make sure you're staying nice and tight up against the steel there. Works pretty good, here we go. just hit it with the welder make it look like a spot weld without having to get in behind it and the wood actually keeps the steel from peening over at the back so no grinding so this is the floor I just take uh, those little dull flapper wheels and just take the paint off around the outside you want to make sure that uh, you don't see many sparks and then you're taking steel off and on the sides here I drilled the holes I'm just gonna spot weld that to the to the side here where it's grinded and you can see that and then uh, the was spot welded to the inner rocker I'm gonna fill those with seam sealer and I'm gonna spot weld it to the lip here um, nobody will know the difference It'll be just as strong and uh, then I don't have to weld all these holes full it's a waste of time so and then I also take the grinder and just take the paint off with one of those dull flapper wheels all the way around and that makes for nicer welding. Uh, for thinner, this floor is actually pretty thick and it's hard to cut with thin snips. So I'm gonna leave my 35 style welding wire in. Smaller stuff like our GTO here, um, we we're gonna want a smaller wire for the welder, 25 thou or so. But uh, we're gonna put some clamps in, get it in place, and see what it looks like and uh, start tacking her in place. Here we go. So this is about as good as it gets. Just a little cut all the way along. Um, not very thick. I should be able to buzz that. It's a little bit tight in that corner, but when you bring this down, that pops down nicely. A nice even gap. Just enough for these clips to come in. And then uh, whatever it takes to get it nice and level. Uh, where the uh, frame rails are underneath, I just use a roofing screw left over from my construction days to pull it tight and when I weld it, you know, like I weld beside it and then uh, the other ones I'll weld first and pull this out and then the hole will get covered up with the weld and then I'll weld the sides here with uh, the MIG and she'll look 100% brand new here we go Once you have uh, tacks every couple inches, you can work off those tacks really nice. Um, 
You can use a blow gun to cool the weld right after you weld it. That'll help uh, with the warpage. I'm not gonna get too, too concerned about it because it is a truck. Um, but you do, don't wanna weld, uh, you only wanna weld spot welds every couple inches to keep the heat uh, down to a minimum so you can still touch it and uh, that will help with the warpage. So this is gonna take a while, spot welding all the way around and around and around and around, but uh, she'll be 100% when she's done. Here we go. So this is three hours of tack welding all the way around. The closer you get the seams, the better it'll go. No filling holes and stuff. So it uh, turned out nice. I'm going to go underneath first and see if I can see any light. I'm going to leave the light in the top here. And if there's any holes, I can get them from the bottom. Anything ugly, I can get from the bottom and then I can grind it. Uh, usually I use a, just a typical grinding stone first, take off any of the high spots, any sharp pieces, any knobs and that, and then I use one of those flapper wheels that uh, uh, does a nice sanding job. So let's go take a look underneath. There she is all welded in, a few little sticks sticking out here and there. Um, hard to see with the light, but it actually looks pretty good. Actually really good. Shouldn't be bad at all to uh, grind that up nice. I can see all my MIG sticking through. Bigger spot right there where I burned, where I burned through, but uh, no problem. Yeah, I don't think there's anything. I might probably find. Oh, there's one screw hole there. I got a weld shut there. I can do that from the bottom here, but uh, it looks pretty good. Really good. There we go. So that's with one pass of my grinding stone. Starting to look much, much better. I will use the flapper wheel. This is a worn one. I'm going to grab a brand new one. Here we go. That's it with the 40 grit. We'll go over it again with the 80 grit. Starting to look much nicer. Here we go. So to finish it off, we're just going to use a seam sealer. Just put a light coat over top of the weld. It is paintable and sandable. Just a tiny little piece and then just spread it out. Cover up any imperfections and also seal it. Keep the moisture out, keep it from rotting. I definitely want to do along the side, uh, just on the top here. And you can see that that's factory. That they also do the same thing. So, and once it dries, we'll paint it. It should be good as new, better than new. Here we go. So after putting the um, seam sealer on, uh, you can sand it a little bit, make it look a little better. And uh, we're going to put some self-etching primer on it. And nobody will ever know that this floor was ever in it. Once that dries, we'll try and find some gray to match the rest of the floor. And uh, Bob's your uncle. Here we go. So follow a variety of projects that include conversions and repairs to anything from Ferraris to chainsaws. And check out the Tape Boss, my newest invention that's coming to market. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich.